This is Steven Zucker. Beth Harris. Introducing Julie Krynick. Julie's here for the first time joining us in Smart History, and we're going to talk about this really cool photograph that I really love. Can you tell us what it is? It's actually a photo montage, and the title is uh, The Roving or Frantic Reporter. And this is a, a, a portrait of a specific person, right? It is a portrait of a Czech journalist. The portrait's from 1926 and is of a man named Egon Erwin Kish. And he was an actual reporter. He was an actual reporter, an actual journalist who was roving around, mostly in Germany and in big cities like Berlin. And the photo montage is by this amazing German artist, Otto Umber, who went so, by the name Umbo. So what's amazing about Umber? Umber. Well, look at this. It's I mean, fantastic. It's, it's a great... <laughs> I mean, we're going to call him... Umbo, because that's okay. that's sort of the slang name that he chose for okay. himself. So he just went by Umbo. So Umbo created this photo montage, and really it, it relates both directly to the kind of journalist that Kish was, and that he was roving around and he was sort of frantically seeking new information. But it also relates to this idea that we're totally informed by the technologies of our own era. And I just, I think it's just fascinating to look at all these modern technologies that create this journalist. That make up him. Yes. And in a sense, make up the culture at this moment. Absolutely. And really kind of probably dominated the way people were interacting with the world, just like we are so involved in the internet and chatting and I am, mm -hmm. all of true. these technologies were really but, but the word you used a moment ago, dominating, is perfect because this is a giant who's he striding is. over the city. He, he is. is. He's dominating the landscape completely. Um, yes, it, and he sees everything, sort of like God. Well, he has know? all of these sort of enhanced appendages right. um, and sensory abilities so that you can see the camera lens makes up his right eye, and he has these sort of phonograph speakers as his ears. He hears better than anyone right. else, and he sees, sees better. better. And, and he moves better. Exactly. His, his leg is a car and a plane. He's ready to move. You know, it's so interesting because, um, you know, in the 20s is really when popular comic figures were with, with sort of expanded powers, mm -hmm. right? Superheroes. The superheroes were really being developed. And this is, is that true? Do those yeah, date from the 20s? Absolutely. He's like a superhero journalist. Right. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's and you know, it, it reminds me of walking around texting now with your oh, thumb. Yeah, that's actually because really he's, good. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's actually typing he's as typing he's striding he over the, the mountains <laughs> and the crowd below. Of course, right. at the time, the typewriter <laughs> is, to them, what? Blackberry is to us, to us or an yeah. iPhone, right? It's that thing that speeds up communication. So that's really interesting because now, of course, you know, there's in the popular press, there is all these fears about people spending too much time on their Blackberries, too much time on their computers. I mean, is this and really multitasking? Sort of, and multitasking. He's, he's like the exactly. original he's, multitasker. He so, he but is. this is also, I think, an expression of those fears. And it's kind of a is. monstrous figure, you know, with this technology. And I think it's also. You know, while he's sort of heroic and that he's huge and enormous and he has all these enhanced sensory abilities like a superhero, like his superpowers, but he's also really kind of maybe a little menacing. Yeah. Right. Oh, no question. You know, he's going to stomp on the he's, crowd yeah, he's below gonna crush and kill them, them with all of his abilities there. And but this this also really reminds me of images of people after World War One with prosthesis. Yes. Oh, so the deformation of the body. Yeah, like people, you know, the veterans coming back and, and images like by George Gross. The wounded war veteran. Yeah. That, that image, that the Kriegs cripple is the yeah, war. Yeah. The war um, cripple. The war cripple. And that was just this huge sort of symbolic and literal figure that came into the German, I mean, many landscapes, but especially all across Germany, I think there were four million new wounded war veterans. That were all of a sudden that had and not all of them with... had um, prosthetic limbs, but a huge proportion of them did. So the technologies of the war um, all of a sudden totally changed the way people relate to their own bodies and the way that they relate to other people's bodies. Mm -hmm. But you know, this isn't really a, a good association, right? Because Germany yeah. lost the war. So they're not looked at as heroic figures. They're, right. you know, the veterans who lost, and they lost their limbs. And, and it's sort of a reminder to germ humiliation. Yeah. But that's been reversed here. 
because there's a kind of, even though there's a menace and there's a sort of a negative aspect to some extent, there's also a real promise here and a sense of power. The parts of his face that are still, that are not obscured, are still really quite handsome and there's a, there's a very positive aspect here as well. Mm -hmm. I think he's dashing. He is you know, dashing he's, with he's, his cigarette, the suave, cigarette yeah, he's kind of glamorous. He's very even. glamorous. So it's a kind of retrieval of the promise of technology then, mm -hmm. in some way. Sort of trying to reclaim technology as something that offers promise, optimism, and and hope and things that help progress. Progress, exactly. Modern yeah. modern culture and, and this was progress. A, this and was a pretty desperate moment in, in German uh, sort of economic history. Well, right? it's it's actually interestingly a few years after desperation. Things are better in Germany. Slightly this is better. Slightly better in 1926. I mean, a lot better than they were in 1920. And through the early 20s, things were still in recovery. But by the mid-20s, things are getting better, and I think in large part due to things like industrial, industrial growth. I'm wondering if people looking at this and seeing the camera by his eye would have thought of those images of gas masks during the war. Yeah, it's a pre pretty dense layer of associations here. It's pretty extraordinary. So how was this kind of imagery received in the 20s? You know, I think it had different audiences. I think artists that looked at it, that were interested in you know new kinds of image making, new vision photography, were, received it really well. This was also on the cover of a book that was sort of a collection of Kirsch's his journalistic pieces, and it was reproduced many, many times. And that's also kind of relating to the idea of Mechanical modern technology and reproduction. Sure. And so, you know, the image is reproduced; it's rephotographed, made from it's photographs, made from photographs, pieced together. Kind of there are a variety of echoes. For me, one of the really interesting things is the idea of sort of the speed and technology, mm -hmm. everything kind of coming together. You know, the journalist is exploring things and looking all around him. It's almost like he can see everything at once, and technology is what's enabling him to do mm -hmm. that. So I think that idea that technology enables us to do more and better and faster. Which we, which we still have. Exactly. I think right. it was exciting then, and I think it was exciting. Technology can solve our problems. But I think also the reassertion of the power of the journalist is probably a really important, um, a really important issue at this mm -hmm. moment. Um, especially if we get the sense that the journalist has some integrity, is not a part of a, a sort of a larger machine of propaganda, right. and has some objectivity. Right, which is also, of course, going to disappear in Nazi Germany very quickly. By the end of the 1920s um, and early 1930s, things are looking vastly different. But 26 is a is a good year. <laughs> I think um, the economy is looking up. Things aren't quite looking bad yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there's this moment of progress. And, you know, technology is just integral to that. Like, it's integral yeah. to his body. Yeah. yeah. It's fascinating. Terrific. Cool. Thanks.